The following game features explicit language. Viewer discretion is advised. Ah, oh boy. Well, I need to play a game. An adventure game, because that's kind of what I do. Hmm. Well, what do we have here? This appears to be an AGS game on Steam. And those graphics. They look rather reminiscent of Wadjadai's style now. Could it be? <gasps> oh. Ben Chandler appears to have done the art for this game. Huh. Why haven't I heard more about it? Who the hell made this game? Oh! Owl Cave. Didn't they make Richard and Alice? Yeah, I remember that game. It was pretty alright. Olivia, what's her face? Is the face behind that company? Oh god, I'm terrible with names. Wait a minute. Speaking of names, oh my god, there's a celebrity voice actor in this game, Jim Sterling. Well, looks like I need to buy this game. Surprise, I haven't heard much about it at all. You know, I can think of a song that can succinctly summarize my thoughts about this game. Cue the music. Okay, so maybe the intro has been exaggerated for comedic effect, but the point still stands. This game is kinda fucked up, especially towards the end of the trilogy. And yeah, that's what this game is. It's a trilogy. Although really it's one game into three chapters, but I guess calling it a trilogy sounds cooler than calling it chapters. Charnel chapters! Wow, that sounds like a punk band. Nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, it is customary to start at the start of a trilogy, so let's start at the start of this trilogy, starting now. So, it's another good evening to you, my fellow cheated hearts of New York City. Yeah, DJ, play that funky beat. So we get a little bit of exposition thanks to the DJ. She tells us, hey, we in New York. It's probably sometime in the winter or fall, or possibly even spring, cause it was recently snowing. Now it's all thundering and lightning and very atmospheric for a horror game, which just so happens to be what this game is. It stopped snowing days ago. I ran out of excuses not to go and see him. I don't want to think about this. Hey, that's our protagonist. Now, you don't know what she's talking about yet, because she's being all vague to create atmosphere and mood. But what she's talking about is her daddy, or rather, her stepfather, who's dying in the hospital. She just visited him. I don't know why she's being so goddamn secretive about it. Could have saved a good chunk of this opening intro. And now she's taking a shower. You don't see anything, so... Sorry, pervert, you don't get your pixel titties now. Anyway, if I'm gonna be honest with you, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing right now. I'm just wandering around this lady's apartment, clicking on stuff, and I guess kind of getting a little bit of slice of life action here, which I guess is okay. Immerse yourself. Learn about this angsty protagonist whose name, well, I don't even think that's been revealed yet, has it? Nevertheless, I eventually uncover that this lady still has an answering machine. My god, what year is it? For real. What year is this game taking place in? Because if this is the 80s or 90s, having an answering machine is kind of normal. But if it's 2016, it's like, what is this lady? Some kind of hipster? Got a lot of vinyl laying around? Where's the flannel lady? Yeah, and I bet she chugs PBR too. Oh, well, let's listen to the messages. Congratulations. You have won tickets to the Krennic on Thames Museum's latest exhibit. Straight from the catacombs of Augur Peak, this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to... Tickets to an English museum? This is New York, kids. Not interested. Okay, so what does one have to do with the other? Is this like a reference to something that I'm just not getting? Because I don't understand why New Yorkers wouldn't be interested in a British museum. Is there still some lingering resentment from the American Revolution? Hi, Alex. Oh shit, we just got her name. Alex. Well, unless this is a message left for the wrong number. The nurse just told me you'd been in. Should have let me know. I'd have made sure I was here. It's been a while. I'm sure your dad appreciates it, love. You know he'd tell you that himself if he could. Call me on my cell when you get this. Goodbye. Love you. Bye. End of final message. I didn't call, Mom, because I knew you would be there. And I couldn't do it if you were. Oh, so that was Alex's mama. Now I'm starting to think that red and black isn't Alex's natural hair color. God damn it. Talking to myself. My therapist says it's my desire for an audience, for company. I say it's because I constantly feel like I'm being watched. Well, this is uncomfortable. Anywho, 
I have no idea why Alex is so angsty, at least not yet. Now, I have a vague idea that there's something going on with something medical involving someone she cares about. Anywho, I mosey over to the computer and just kind of mess around with it for a while. I find out that she's broken up with her boyfriend and has left a scratched up picture of him on her desktop. Okay, I guess we'll never know what he looks like. So, this is all I know about Alex right now. Someone she cares about is in the hospital, probably dying, and she broke up with her boyfriend. Okay. Anything else I need to learn about this lady's personal life before we can carry on with the adventure? Oh well, no time for that now. Gotta track my package. It has to be here today. Of course, I had to change all my regular passwords. Gavin knew them. God damn it, what did I use here? Sounds like we got a puzzle of brewin here. I think I wrote it down somewhere when I was drunk. Oh yeah. Ah, here it is, I think. The writer walks the shores where love inscribed its final kiss. Time to read, Alex. So that's the stuff that drunk Alex writes down. Wow, most of my drunken notes are pretty much chicken scratch. So this puzzle is pretty straightforward-ish. Well, it's straightforward because the room's tiny and there's only so many things you can interact with, basically. You go to the bookcase and click on the books, and then eventually Alex remembers the right book that she was thinking of when she drunkenly scrawled that thing down. Probably because she's all upset that Gavin, her boyfriend, broke up with her, or whatever happens, I'm sure we'll get into this relationship later. For your graduation, I hope there will always be room in your spectacular mind for me. You are my island. Love you forever and always, Gavin. Oh, love is a lie. If Gavin and Alex couldn't make it, can any of us? Anywho, we type in the password into the computer, and then it's uncovered that this lady bought some train tickets? But oh no. What? The site says it was delivered and signed for. I don't recognize that signature, and even I would have remembered signing for it today. Looks like it says Benwood or something? What? Well, great. Fucking perfect. I need those tickets. Well, me, as a player, I would like to know why. But yeah, she doesn't really tell us. Maybe the website's fucked. It's too late to call them now. What else can I do but wait? Oh, damn. There's a ghost. This must be a Blackwell spinoff. Now it's storming. This is gonna be fun, making my way to the station by midnight. I'm not being sarcastic. I just want the tickets to get here. Guess I'd better find a way to spend my evening then. I have to make my way to the train station by midnight, but I have to find a way to spend my evening. So... I find that to be a little bit vague. Why aren't we just going to the train station early? But you know I am still wondering why the hell we even want to go to the train station. In fact, I want to know basically anything. Because right now it feels like I'm just being some pervert, watching some author avatar do whatever she does. Yeah, sure. If you insist, stomach. Yeah, it kind of seems like I'm playing The Sims right now. Except I don't have to worry about making this lady pee or not. Three pickled onions and a slice of bread. What a fucking fantastic dinner. So any hoot, we engage in adventure game logic to unlock the DVD cabinet. It involves a dog. I kid you not. But hey, at least it's grounded slightly in reality. It fits perfectly. Aw, oh, shit. The tail's just snapped off. Well, this was one of my better ideas, wasn't it? Fuck's sake. Oh. It was a dark and stormy night and I kicked open a DVD cabinet and fell asleep watching a DVD. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to build the atmosphere here because honestly, fuck all's going on right now. Huh? Shit. I fell asleep. Huh. Gone eight. Phone's ringing. Well, thank you, character, for providing us with all that lovely exposition. So we answer the phone, and guess what? Jim Sterling's on the other line. Hello? Gavin? Oh, Rob, hi. What's up? Oh, really? That's brilliant. Oh, thanks so much. Thank you. That was Rob, my neighbor from the apartment down the hall. He has my package. Yeah, this character is a little bit inconsistent with how she talks to us. Sometimes she's like, oh, I just talk to myself. My therapist says it's because I'm a little bit banana pants crazy. And other times she just does it for plot convenience. Like, right then and there. 
Felt like we could have just listened to the conversation. But then again, I guess Jim Sterling doesn't work cheap. Nevertheless, if there's a phone call in a game and it's mundane sounding, you can pretty much guarantee that if there's another phone call, it's going to be pretty heavy. Hello? Yes, this is Alex Davenport speaking. Oh, I'm on to ya, game, I'm on to ya. Thank you. I can't breathe. I can't fucking breathe. Oh, fuck, the Countess has her, and I don't see Angela Blackwell anywhere. We are so screwed. Or it could just be a panic attack, and all we need to do is take a few huffs out of this inhaler, and then everything will be hunky-dory. <gasps> so, of course, a knock on the door prevents us from getting an exposition dump about why this lady had the panic attack, but I'm sure her conversation with Jim Sterling will bring it up. Hey, Alex. Jesus, how bad is this storm? Oh, hey, are you alright? I'm fine. Thanks. Fine. I just had a bit of bad news. I'll, I'll be fine. Sorry, Rob. Couldn't afford animation or a different little face picture to make her seem distressed. Or maybe Alex is just really damn tough and internalizes all of her pain. Again, it's a nitpick, but that's kind of what I do here. Laugh, damn it. It'll be alright. I... I just need to sort some stuff out. Bad times. You know how it is. Hey, look, thanks for bringing this over. You sure? No. Yeah. Seriously, I'll be fine. Thanks, Robert. You only call me Robert when you're not okay, Al. I know you like your own company, but seriously, you know where I am if you need me. Yeah, I do. And honestly... Jim Sterling's not a terrible voice actor. There, I said it. He's doing an adequate enough job. Honestly, tomorrow you're gonna have me sniveling on your doorstep begging you to listen, but right now I just need... I just need... No, it's okay, Al. Take all the time you want. Wait. That packaging just disappeared into the ether. It's haunted. It's a ghost package! Or not. I won't be here tomorrow. Sorry, Rob. I'll call you. Please don't worry about me. I don't want to think about anything right now. The days are endless. I need to get ready to leave. Well, just heap the vagueness upon the vagueness, game. It's not like I have any idea what exactly is going on now. Outside, the city begins to withdraw. A siren sounds in the night, blue light reflecting on brickwork as tireless paramedics rush to the scene of another trauma. Yeah, it sounds like the lady's reciting some of her own poetry now. It gets kind of profanity laid in towards the end. You don't know me. Jesus, game, don't turn this into Jera Springer. I try to communicate with you! You never fucking knew me. Go fuck yourself, you judgmental, self-righteous prick. Sorry, Gim, just trying to, you know, lighten the mood here, be a little bit funny. Don't, don't take it so personally, man. So anyway, her bags are magically packed now that she's yelled at her window about stuff. I'm sure it has something to do with the relationship with her boyfriend and what's happened and a lot of personal stuff that I can't quite yet comprehend because I'm not fully aware of the gravity of the situation yet. And oh, Jesus, there's the ghost again. Okay, does the ghost have anything to do with this game, you're asking? No, no, it, it really doesn't. It's just kind of here. I think it's just a Blackwell shout out. Any hoot, we're by a train station now. How'd we get here? I don't know. We didn't have an overmap. We're just here now. Let's roll with it. It's a clean, crisp night. Just past midnight. Is it just me or is Alex now talking like she's out of a pulp novel? I never saw a dame like that walk into my office. It was half past midnight and I was choking on my tenth pack of cigarettes. I had nothing to lose. Red was due. The landlord was on my ass. I'm a disgrace cop. All kidding aside, all we gotta do here is talk to the guy who's standing here. All conspicuous like that. So, uh, where are you headed? A little port town. Last stop. <laughs> Me too. I'm not staying there, though. Catching the ferry to Auger Peak, Peak Island. Island. <laughs> yeah, me too. 
Oh, right, we finally have a location, and this dude who's standing beside us, he's going to the same place we are. Why, you ask? I don't know. At least, why Alex is going there. This dude, I do know, he's like a doctor, like an archaeologist, and he's going to dig up some ancient pottery and stuff on the island. Which I guess is cool, and Alex doesn't make fun of him for it. So you know what? I smell the friendship brewing. Perhaps we should give him our book. Then we can really solidify this new relationship with the complete stranger we met on a snowy train stop. Hey. Hey. You can take this. I've already read it. Pulp horror fiction. Yeah, sorry. It is kind of what we're experiencing right now, Dr. Dude, sorry. Yeah, I think you were hoping for Indiana Jones, but that's just pulp adventure. So the train shows up, and as is customary, people get aboard, mainly our protagonist and the Dr. Dude. But this porter, conductor guy, he seems a little bit weird to me. Aye, I reckon so. <sighs> So that does it, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, to the over-analysis, at least, of the first part of the trilogy of the Journal House. I want to call it the Channel House, but that's not how you say it. Either way, I'm done with Inhale, and we'll move on to Sepakur. I want to say Sepaku, I just can't say anything right. But anywho, this is part one. Part two will be out when I make it. And yeah, there will be a third part, because, you know, it's a trilogy. Yeah, take each part of the trilogy, or trilogy, if you will, part by part. Yeah. So I'll see you guys. Have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Uh, subscribe! Uh, subscribe. Uh,